Bridge. Care to join me? What is it, Brooke? I was going to ask you a question about the programs for the showing, but I can see that you have other things on your mind. I do. And I know exactly what's on yours. Taylor told me that you sent Ridge off to Paris with Morgan. I think that was a mistake. Oh. Things aren't working out exactly as you had planned? No. Too bad. If Ridge and Morgan can't focus on their work, we're not going to have a collection to show in Europe this season. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. But I am worried, Stephanie. And you should be, too. Taylor called Ridge's hotel room today, and guess what? Ridge didn't answer. Morgan did. No, no, Megan, no thanks. No message. Um... I'll just catch up with her when she's back in town. Thanks. Hmm. So, Miss Morgan DeWitt has left town, hmm? Yeah, she's in Paris with Ridge. Ah, oh, Paris. I heard something about that. They had a fire at Forrester's International Branch. Well, that'd explain why Ridge is there, but damage control really isn't Morgan's forte. Well, damage control better be our forte, Bucky, because I sense a potential disaster for us. Is there a problem with the showing? No, not the showing. With C.J., it would seem that both of the garrison men have a thing for Forrester female employees. Who are you talking about? I am talking about the little Moor girl. And if she's anything like her cousin Amber, then an innocent little romance could get very serious very fast. So, did you get him back to sleep? Oh, yeah, he's out like a light now. Cool. Want me to read you some more poetry? Um, no, um, actually, I wanted to talk. Okay, about what? I think you know. <laughs> that comment you made <laughs> about your mom? About love? Oh, look, Becky, if you think I'm moving too fast no, here... No, no, I don't. I mean, I realize we haven't known each other that long. But it, it, it's not how long we've known each other. It's how well. I don't think there's anything that you could say to me that I haven't been wanting to say to you, too. Um, are you going to come in, or are you going to give me a towel? No, no, no. I, I, I was... Oh, God. I'm just kidding. Right, of course, you were just kidding. <sighs> Could use a towel, though. You know, Ridge, I really didn't mean to come in here like this. I, I, I meant to tell you that um, Taylor called, and so... I knocked. And, um, I should go. It's okay, it's okay. We have to be at the International in about 20 minutes anyway. I'm so sorry. It's all right. You can give me a peek later and we'll be even, okay? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Get out of here. I'll be dressed in a minute.
This is real, isn't it? I sure hope so. hard for me to believe that this is happening. You know, I mean, first time we went out, we hit it off, but I had no idea. I know, I didn't think I could ever feel this way. It makes two of us. Everybody always says that when you know, you just know, but think it was true. Yeah, I definitely thought it'd be a lot more complicated. Well, it is sort of complicated. I mean, your mom does hate me. Hey, no, no. Look, my mom doesn't hate you. She just doesn't know you. And once she meets you and finds out how special you are... CJ, I'm not that special. You are me. Oh, Beck, sorry. Oh, Amber. <laughs> What's wrong? Maybe I should go. Yeah. She's gonna need to talk. So Morgan answered the phone in Ridge's room. What does that matter? It doesn't matter at all. You know, I never should have listened to you and Taylor. I suspected there might be a problem. But you told me that was all in the past and there was nothing to worry about. What problem? What are you talking about? Ridge and Morgan's history. I tried to talk to you about it the other day, but you walked out on me. Now, if you'd just been honest, none of this would have happened. But nothing has happened. Are you telling me they weren't seriously involved? They weren't. Oh, come on, Stephanie. I know that you're lying. I talked to Morgan. Morgan, this is Suzanne. She's in charge of what's left of the collection. Mr. Witt, it's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, Morgan, please. Thank you. Yeah, well, no more formalities. Well, I don't know what Brooke has told you, but... The fire destroyed almost everything. And with the show coming up, things have been a little crazy around here. Were you able to salvage any of the designs? Only about two or three. What about the original sketches? Almost all destroyed, and the patterns and the muslin mock-ups. OK, well, obviously, we need to get to work here. OK, then I can show you to the storeroom. You could survey the damage, and you could get set up in your office. We're going to be sharing workspace? Yes, with well, the only available office is the one on this floor. That's not a problem, Suzanne. Privacy is not really an issue with us, is it? Good, you're both here. Yeah, we're here. We've been here all day. Where were you? Uh, you were supposed to be working, weren't you? Yeah, I just, I got kind of busy. Well, that doesn't surprise me. It seems to me you've been very busy with this what's-her-name Moore girl a great deal lately, haven't you? I don't know how much good these designs are going to be. Well, at least it'll give us some place to start. I wish we could have saved more. Well, given the damage, I'm surprised you were able to save anything at all. So the investigator definitely ruled out arson, though. Well, she hasn't finished her official report, but it looks like it was an electrical fire, a short in one of the lights. So it was an accident. Accidents do happen, don't they, Rich? Well, um, if you won't be needing me anymore, I'll let you two get to work. 
You're on line with the office in L.A., and um, if you need to reach me, I'm on line three. And later on today, Monsieur Dussebois will be calling from Milan. Thank you, Suzanne. Appreciate it. Thank you, Suzanne. Morgan? Everything all right? Mm, it's fine. Let's just get to work. What's her name, more girl? Her name is Becky, Mom. Whatever her name is, CJ, I don't think she's right for you. How do you know that? You don't. In fact, you don't know anything about her. I know enough about her to be suspicious of her motives, and apparently that's more than you know about her. You're being so ridiculous. No, I am not being ridiculous. I am being protective. I am looking out for your best interest. That's what mothers do. Look, I don't need you to look out for me, okay? I know what I'm doing. What are you doing, CJ? Are you two uh, dating? Yeah, we're seeing each other. Well, your mother seems to think that you two are getting serious. Yeah, so? Might not be a good idea. Really? Why is that? What do you have against her? Nothing, personally. I've never actually met her, but... Okay. Well, I think it's time you did. I want to have Becky over for dinner tomorrow night. No, no, wait a minute. What? CJ. No, sorry. Well, I'm sorry too, Mom. I I'm sorry that you can't see how much this person means to me. I I'm sorry you can't see how happy I've been, but you can't see any of that, can you? No. No, you can't see it because all you see is a single mom from a poor family whose cousin did something really stupid. But that's not who Becky is. So are you saying that all the negative things we've heard about her are not true? No, I'm saying that they don't matter to me. Well, maybe they should matter to you, oh, son. God, I, I cannot believe that you are saying this, you of all people. You were a single mom when I was a kid, right? Were we rich? Did anybody respect or trust us? No. You're judging Becky just like everybody judged us. Listen, I care about this girl, Mom, and I'm not gonna let you or anybody else put her down. CJ, nobody is putting Becky down. Yes, yes, you are, both of you. No, we are not. We are simply suggesting you be a little careful. You just met this girl, CJ. You hardly know her. No, Mom, you're wrong. I do know her. And I want you guys to get to know her, too. Look, Becky is a good person and a terrific mother. And she's coming over for dinner tomorrow night, whether you like it or not. Rick was so cold, Becky. He saved my job, but he wouldn't even look at me. Amber, I am so sorry. Yeah. I know so am I. Hello? Hey, Becky, it's me. Hey, how's it going with Amber? Um, she had a really rough night at work. Oh, all right, well, I won't keep you. Listen, I, uh, I just wanted to ask you to have dinner with my family tomorrow night. Oh, what does your mom think? It'll be fine. She's actually looking forward to it. She really wants to get to know you. I know there's more to the story. No, there isn't. You just wish there were. You hated her, didn't you? You wish that Ridge was with a debutante. Someone like Caroline Spencer. But instead, he fell for Morgan, a 17-year-old model. And that's just not the kind of future you wanted for him. Oh, Brooke, there was no future. They had no future. What are you talking about? If it was just a fling, why would she be so reluctant to go to Paris with Ridge? Why would she feel so uncomfortable to be alone with him? I don't know. I mean, perhaps she does have some regrets having left here so long ago. Did she hurt him? Did she leave Ridge? No. Look, I know they were more involved than you're letting on. I just don't know why you're pretending they weren't. Come on, Stephanie, admit it. 
You have to be upset to see that they're together again. But they're not together. Oh, I think they are. Oh, well, I think you're wrong. Whatever transpired between Morgan and Ridge is... Uh, that, I mean, God, that was years ago. Years ago. Believe me when I tell you, it is long over. Thank you. This is just what I needed. Well, I figured you two must be pretty jet-lagged. Yeah, Morgan's been pretty out of it all day. She was wandering around the hotel like a zombie. I was not. <laughs> oh, so then you meant to walk in on me in the shower then, huh? Excuse me, Suzanne. You know, Ridge and I, we left L.A. so quickly, and I think he forgot to pack his manners. But I did remember my sense of humor. They obviously confiscated hers in customs. <laughs> uh, um, excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, if we're making you uncomfortable in any way... No, not at all. I'm, as a matter of fact, uh, if you don't mind my saying, you two remind me of an old, bickering married couple. Yeah, Ridge and I are, um, old friends. Old friends, yeah. She was my girlfriend. She's the only woman that ever broke my heart. Look, I think that Suzanne doesn't really need to hear all of this. But it's a fascinating story. Girl meets boy, girl dumps boy, girl takes off, poof, you know, poof of smoke. Which is exactly what I'm going to do if you don't just keep quiet. You know, I'm sure that soccer player is probably out there pining away for you somewhere. What soccer player? Oh, I don't know. I'm just making it up now, but I never did figure out who she ran off with. Why do you keep bringing this up? You know, why can't you just leave it alone? Okay, maybe it wasn't a soccer player. Maybe it was a polo player. He took you on tour to Argentina, maybe. And then off to merry old England for a little match with Prince Charles. Look, that's enough, okay? You know, what a life you must have led. I never really thought of myself as chop liver, but I guess our relationship just wasn't what I thought it was. I guess it was just a roll in the hay you know, for you. You know, you better just stop it, all right? Never talk about our relationship that way. It wasn't a joke. And don't ever, ever talk about it that way again. I mean, what do you think I am? Some sort of, like, cheap floozy who went off with the highest bidder? Is that it? No, Morgan. Well, you have no idea what it feels like, what I went through. Oh, but it doesn't matter to you because you're so quick to judge. You think this whole thing was a game, don't you? Well, it wasn't a game. It was very upsetting and difficult. And you, of all people, I thought would understand that. Morgan, I'm, I'm sorry, I, uh, I'm very sorry, I should have just kept my mouth shut. 